Uh, I'm from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and uh, I've been adventure racing since 2008, and uh, just into ultra running the last uh, two years. So, Simon, uh, what made you want to do the uh, 330k Tour de Jayon? Well, my friend Nikki Rain did this last year, and she came back with rave reviews. Uh, a few of them from Calgary did it, and they said it's a beautiful area. Uh, my father was born in Italy, so it was kind of cool to come back for that. And with the adventure racing background, I just thought it'd be a good fit for my skill set. This, this is a hard race. It's a very hard race. Um, you get chewed up in other adventure races. The longer it goes, the uh, the more beat up your body gets. You've got to think about sleep, and the strategies change for each distance. But um, this one, since you can move so fast. Uh, it just it takes it to a new level and the amount of uh, climbing and descending is that's what I'm not used to uh, like putting so many climbs and descents back to back to back without any kind of break you don't get to hop on a bike you just you just keep running it's very hard uh, how much running is there in this? Well, it depends on what your goals are, but uh, I mean, I was I was hoping to do uh, very well in this race. So if it was flat, I ran. If it was uh, descent, I ran. So you know, 90% of all the descents I would run. Um, going up, I would power hike. Uh, you obviously didn't finish. Uh, we're talking you know, just uh, hours before our main finishers will be coming through. Uh, tell me about how your race went uh, and what you think uh, you know may have gone wrong for you. Sure. Um, well, the race started out a lot harder than uh, I'd anticipated. The pace was very high, and on that first climb, it's like <laughs> I don't have enough fingers to count the number of white-haired guys who climbed past me. It was out of control. But uh, anyways. So once I got past the first climb and started to settle in, feel a little more comfortable, uh, started to make up places. My, my plan was, you know, I wanted, I wanted to do well, I wanted to try and get on the podium, um, but that was going to be more of a strategy race. And in my head, it was the race starts on the third day. So uh, the end of the first day, I was exactly where I wanted to be. I had finished 100 kilometers in under 24 hours, so that was perfect. I think I was 15th to 20th place at that time, so plenty of room to, to move up, which was good. Uh, two hours of sleep that night, and uh, I'm not sure. I must have sprained my ankle on a downhill. It didn't happen just like that, but uh, I just I couldn't downhill fast anymore, and then it all my weight was on the poles, and uphill was okay still, but uh, at that point, when I came into Donis, which was almost 150k, my race had pretty much finished by then, and I had to decide whether I wanted to try and continue, and the volunteers kind of pushed me out the door, so I went uh, for another, what, 20k or so to, uh, to the halfway point and a little beyond, and then just wasn't worth doing further damage. So uh, how did you make the call to, to stop? It's always hard to end your race when you're when you're out there. Um, cause you feel like you're quitting, and nobody wants to be a quitter. Um, I just wrestled with it in my head for a while, but ultimately, it wasn't a blister thing. It wasn't a muscle soreness thing. It was something a little deeper, and I just I didn't want to injure myself further. I, want, I still want to keep racing in the fall, so it wasn't it, to me. It wasn't worth finishing just to say I crossed the line when. I might not be able to train or race again for weeks or months. Uh, what kind of mentality do you have to have to tackle something like this and do well? This race is, uh, is interesting because it is so long. Um, you have to be strong mentally. That's really what it comes down to. I mean, the guys in the top 20, 30, 50 even, they're all very, very fit and healthy. And they all probably have the physical skills to land on the podium any given day. Uh, so really it becomes a, a strategic race and uh, your, mental, uh, your mental toughness and you just, just have to be prepared to accept a certain amount of discomfort and pain and suffering. Yeah, this race is uh, won or lost on tactics. Um, everybody will need to sleep at some point, drugs and caffeine and everything else. I mean, it's longer than three days so you know, you have to, you have to be smart about how you plan your rest and you know, stopping is one thing, but you need to put your feet up and you need to take, get a mental break, so you need to sleep. So that factors in. You, you plan it ahead of time, but then once you're out there, you need to see how your body's feeling. Ideally, my plan was always sleep at night between 2 and 4 a.m. 
that's usually when I'm most tired. You don't want to lose good daylight hours because you can move most uh, most quickly when there's light out, obviously. So, you know, the, the, that's what the strategy is. A lot of the top guys, they'll probably push the first day through with minimal sleep, maybe get sleep on the second day and then try and do the third as well. But you have to listen to your body ultimately. There's a lot of a lot of good memories from this race, even the 172K that I only did. Uh, so many uh, old abandoned houses in the middle of nowhere, on the side of a cliff, basically in a forest, and you know, beautiful rivers and spots you could just grab water from and drink. It's, the, the scenery is uh, astounding, and like I said, the people are very memorable too. Everybody's friendly, willing to put up with my bad French, and uh, yeah, I mean. Overall, the atmosphere of this race is very, very good. Who do you recommend this race for? <laughs> this, this is just two races here. There's a adventure travel uh, race where you see an amazing place and uh, experience something that you probably would have never, ever uh, seen or done had you not signed up for this. And then there's the race race where you have to be fit. You have to be dedicated to putting the training in, and you have to be prepared to suffer. So, on that side of things, this is a great race for adventure racers or people with 100 mile experience. On the other side, if you're fit and you want to take six or seven days to travel through the area and experience the beauty of the mountains, then this is a beautiful experience for that.